I'm Philip Stoter, I'm at Electronica 2012 and I'm joined by Marcus Aschenbruder from Zola. Marcus, great to see you, thanks for joining thanks me again. Thanks a lot for the invitation, good to see you. Your um, transatlantic activities are quite mm -hmm. impressive, you're constantly flying backwards and forwards to your California facility. That's right, yeah. I was lucky enough to visit there earlier this year, mm -hmm. it looks fantastic but it was very new then. It was very new, yeah. How's it looking now, busier in there, ramping up? Sure, we are ramping up night, uh, right now. As you know, we uh, we just opened the site mm. in uh, 15th of December last year. That's when we had the grand opening mm. over there. And uh, we already won within this year uh, 10 major customers over there, wow. where we do uh, actually MPI prototyping and uh, where we are now starting also a volume production in the site. So it's developing pretty good, yeah. Okay. And when you say MPI there, are you using that for MPI and then transitioning um, products elsewhere to here in Europe and your Asian facilities? Right. Or? right. The target for that site is clearly to support our customers in the early stages of uh, the product life cycle. Mm -hmm. so doing R&D support, doing prototyping, MPIs, uh, the ramp up phase until the product is mature, and then deciding together with the customers if we should do it locally, mm. because there might be some uh, made in America needs or something yeah. like that, or even then to offshore to one of our uh, yeah. volume manufacturing sites. Yeah. So you That's have lots target. of options there. Mm. And um, you have facilities in Asia, what's, mm -hmm. what's the situation with them? Are they, are they growing also? They're growing also. So we actually have uh, two sites in, uh, one major, in one industrial park in Taichang. And mm -hmm. what we're actually doing is we will integrate the two sites into one complete new building in the same oh, industrial okay. park with um, uh, more floor space for sure in order that we can keep up with the growth that we, uh, that we see over there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And across all the facilities you have, you have, and it's really nice to see, you have a consistent package in terms of equipment, a consistent mm -hmm. package mm -hmm. in, in the way you lay them out. Mm -hmm. Is that something you very, you were very keen to do from early on to, mm -hmm. to set out your store with a consistent? Sure. Uh, that was also the reason that we decided in, in, in California mm. to go with uh, with a greenfield over mm. there. In fact, uh, because we had several options and we uh, we had a look at a few smaller EMS companies where we might have done an, an uh, emergent acquisition, but uh, finally we decided to do it our own way. Yeah. So it established the same processes, same machines, same software. So we use SAP in all our factories all, uh, over the globe. So and it makes it really easy to transfer a product from place A, uh, a to B or to uh, have the same process uh, mm. parameters and all the sides. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's our way. And winning 10 new accounts out there is great news. Of those accounts, are, are most of them brand new or are they people you were working with here in Europe? Or? No, no. 80% uh, of those are brand new customers okay. that, we, that we didn't uh, have business so far. Yeah, yeah that's really good. That's really and are they nice, companies yeah. that are international that would reflect well on the uh, most other facilities as well? Most of them are international companies yeah. uh, who, who were looking for for uh, an MPI partner mm. over there and who are now are leveraging of our uh, offshore capabilities that we yeah. have, yeah. Okay, um, and we're here in uh, Munich. How's the German market? I know it's tough to be manufacturing in, in Germany, but you've been successfully doing it for some time mm -hmm. through the downturn. Mm -hmm. um, what's it looking like going forward? So if I look at, uh, so I was surprised about Electronica because there were a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of visitors here. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the meetings that we had, there were good uh, good meetings uh, also in terms of uh, the, the future look and and how they look in the future. For sure, right now we are in a little bit uncertain stage uh, because of the political crisis that uh, that we have here in uh, in Europe and. Uh, uh, also the, the weak business in the US but mm. I think in the in the second half of next year we'll see a, yeah. again a growth so until that there will be yeah, flat it's business. It's all about timing yeah. and here in Europe which kind of verticals which sectors do you think um, offer opportunity at the moment? Um, Particularly in Germany, it's uh, it's still uh, industrial electronics, mm. all the, the machine manufacturers. Uh, it's uh, it's for sure medical business, which is uh, which is quite strong out here. Uh, the weak thing right now is a little bit the automotive industry, where mm. there's a lot of uh, overcapacity in the market right yeah. now, and that's what you see in terms of uh, the supply chain that uh, uh, volumes are pushed out. The forecast is is going a little bit down, so that's that's the weak point right now here. Yeah, and are you seeing much in the way of reshoring? Are you seeing much stuff that people want manufactured here because it's larger form factor because they need to be close to their customer. Yeah, but that's a trend that I see already since a few uh, few, a few months, uh, where yep. we, where you see that customers are more tending to have local manufacturing, mm. so that the products are manufactured in the region mm. where the usage of the product is. I think that's a trend which will go on, 
because of uh, the green initiative in the world. Everybody wants to be green, so it doesn't doesn't quite go along yeah. with uh, carbon footprint if you yeah. transfer yeah. the products around the world. So I think uh, there's a lot of influences which are, uh, which are moving in that direction, yeah, yeah. or which are leading in that direction. And if you have an international client playing in those, you've got to be able to service mm -hmm. each and every one of those local right. markets. Yeah, that's, that's the target, so that we have the capabilities to serve our, our customers really yeah. in the local markets. Yeah. That's our target. In Europe, in Asia, and North America. Right. Mm -hmm. So, last question, what next for Zolna? Where, where's oh. the next growth <laughs> likely to be? But you can tell us about that isn't commercially confidential. So we have a few things going on which are which are still co uh, confidential where I can talk about. Mm. But uh, for sure, uh, one thing if you if you look at the landscape that we that we have right now, what is missing missing right now is a, a kind of low cost production site in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly something that uh, we are actually uh, investigating if uh, there's opportunities and how the opportunities look like. Okay, Central America, South America, who knows? Somewhere there, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can keep us guessing there, and we'll find out sure. when it's released. Maybe next time I can tell yeah, you a little yeah. bit more about yeah. that. Okay, well, Marcus, thanks for stopping by. Thanks I for inviting me. I hope the show's me. a success for you. It looks very busy on the booth. So, it is, yeah, it is um, indeed. That's good to see, and I hope we can talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you.